Are you worried about fertilizer burn or have you maybe already caused it? Well, if that's the case, then this video is for you. Hello, Canadian gardeners, cold climate gardeners, and gardeners of the extremes. How are you guys doing? If you are new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, we take the science and we apply it to plant care and the garden. So if you like the sounds lab, be sure to hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and let me know in the comments below what zone you are currently in and if you've ever, ever experienced fertilizer burn yourselves. So in this video, I'm going to be going over fertilizer burn for vegetables, flowers, and lawns. But because I typically do see fertilizer burns in lawns, if this video can get to 100 likes, I will review three of the major fertilizer producers for lawn fertilizer and let you guys know which ones you run the greatest risk of fertilizer burn with and which ones are until for obtaining that green grass. The community on here is awesome so I just want to let you guys know there's no such thing as a stupid question in gardening or plant care because everyone's situation is different. What I mean by that is everyone lives in different homes and different areas of the world and what might work for someone else will not work for you. So gardening and plant care is a dialogue. It is not a contest as to who is smarter and it is more about experience and what people have tried and what has worked. So please do ask questions. No one's going to be mean. And I want this to be a positive space for anyone who is starting out or is an expert and is wanting to debate or exchange ideas. So in this video, we're going to get into how to identify what fertilizer burn looks like, approximately how long it takes to set in, what the science behind fertilizer burn is, and then lastly, how to prevent it in your garden and lawn. So fertilizer burn, what does it look like? Well, it typically starts off yellow and then eventually it ends up into a crusty brown and then the full deterioration of a leaf. The time frame it takes for this to set in can vary based on the type of fertilizer you used. So a liquid fertilizer or a granular mixed in with water fertilizer is only gonna take about a day or two before you end up seeing some of the negative effects. If it is a slow release or a pellet fertilizer that has been spread onto the grass, for example, this can take a week or two before you start seeing the burn, as we like to call it. So the science behind what's happening, it actually has nothing to do with burning. It's not like the sunburn video that we did that talks about the burning in the leaves from the UV rays. This actually has completely to do with the balance between the soil and the root. So we talk about in a lot of the videos, different forms in which plants take up nutrients from diffusion, osmosis, active and passive transport. In the case of fertilizer burn, what we've done is we've disrupted the process of osmosis. So we've caused an imbalance in the salts between the soil profile and the plant biomass. This happens typically with inorganic fertilizers only because of the way that they're processed. The way that fertilizers are made involves a lot of salt. It's no fault of the fertilizer company, it's just simply how we compact or we pack in so much nitrogen, for example, into a fertilizer to get us that luscious green growth. However, the salts also cause an imbalance in osmosis. So what happens when we imbalance the osmosis between the soil profile and our plant is we end up drawing the water from the plant biomass out from the leaves to the roots and then into the soil. This is caused because there's a higher salt concentration within the soil. Osmosis goes from low concentration salt to high concentration salt. So as the water is taken from the plant and put into the soil profile, what happens with the plant's leaves is the mesophyll begins to collapse. This is solely caused by the lack of water. As we talked about in the sunburn video, that mesophyll is very important for chlorophyll. Once it collapses, the chlorophyll can no longer perform its duty of photosynthesis and therefore the green disappears and the plant dies away. In some cases, the plant may recover, but in other cases, not so much. It all depends on how much of the biomass you've managed to burn off. 
So if we know that inorganic fertilizers have high salt, and if we know applying salt to the soil causes an imbalance and osmosis between the plant biomass and the soil profile, which ends up with the burn, we now know a little bit about how we can apply fertilizer safely to prevent fertilizer burn. Now, it shouldn't go without saying, just because if you're using organic fertilizers, doesn't mean you can over apply. You should still use caution and only from an environmental standpoint because fertilizer, regardless of if organic or inorganic, can cause issues with the environment. There is advocacy on a gardener's part, whether it's just a lawn or a vegetable garden, to properly use fertilizers. The reason being is if fertilizer, organic or inorganic, ends up in the waterways, we end up with something called eutrophication. This is the growth of blue-green algae. This is not good for the water and is not good for any of the fish or the wildlife that utilize those water areas. So just because you're using organic does not mean you should over apply and just because you're using inorganic and you're doing it in a method that doesn't cause fertilizer burn this also does not mean you should over apply. Please use both forms responsibly. It is your duty as a gardener. So how do we prevent fertilizer burn? It's really simple, follow the instructions. <laughs> and I know that sounds ridiculous, but these manufacturers don't want you to burn your lawn. It's simply not the case. If you burn your lawn, you are less likely to use their product next year in the, for the rest of the summer. So they don't want you to burn your lawn, follow their instructions. When I look at the instructions and I look how much they tell you to put down, in a lot of cases, they are telling you to under apply by quite a bit actually. So your lawn can utilize actually probably double in some cases of what the instructions are telling you to give it. However, they do not want you to burn your lawn, so they are going to tell you to under apply. There's nothing wrong with that. So keep that in mind, follow the instructions, they do not want your lawn, and I can promise you 99.9% .9 of packages I have seen are telling you to under apply fertilizer, whether it's for your vegetables, your flowers, or your lawn. Number two, water, water, water. If you apply a slow release fertilizer to your lawn or your potted plants, you're going to want to water. That first day after you apply the fertilizer, within moments of applying it, make sure you run your sprinklers for at least 30 minutes. Yes, 30 minutes, and I am not joking. That will force those salts down into the soil profile away from that fibrous root system. If we can force the salts lower in the soil, pro soil profile, we won't end up with burn. Once we get the salts lower in the profile, we won't end up with the burn. The reason being is Salts and nutrients are both water soluble, so if we can water the lawn and we force it down into the soil pores, remember the videos prior when we talked about soil porosity? Well, if we can force that soil farther down into the profile, the roots can reach for it via their rhizosphere, and therefore we won't get that burning effect. Same thing goes with potted plants. Make sure you're just watering on a regular basis. You never want fertilizer to sit stagnantly. When it comes to liquid or soluble granular fertilizer, same thing. Just mix it properly and water. If you're watering on a regular basis and you're forcing the fertilizers lower into the profile, you are not going to run the risk of burn because you don't have the salt's presence to cause it. Now, if you think you didn't read the label properly or you believe you have a sensitive plant and now you're worried about over fertilizing, water, water, water. Just drown the whole system out. You're just going to wash away the salts. If you're noticing something and you're not sure what's causing it, again, water. If you think it could be fertilizer burn, water. It all comes down to water. Salt is water soluble and therefore H2O is your best friend. So. Let me know in the comments below if you have burned your lawn before. <laughs> I know I have. I mean, you just use that little whirly bird thing and it just kind of some dumps out in one spot. Yeah, it burns it. Whatever. It comes back. I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And as always, be sure to share the video with someone you love. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye. Oh, hey there. Are you still watching? Make sure to hit that subscribe button for some more awesome plant videos.